So welcome to the Magic Huge Print 94 review. Next slide, please. So uh, I'll be standing in for all day today. Um, Carol will talk about the community update. Uh, UI will be uh, from Dan. Adam will provide an update on the providers. Tina will go over the Magic and Automate. Uh, Greg will enlighten us on the platform. Uh, Alberta will give us the REST API story. <laughs> and then uh, Chris will do documentation. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, so kind of a, a typical distribution across across all the repos. Um, holding number one is the UI, kind of typical there. Um, integration and manage IQ swapped at number two and three spots this time. V2V is still pretty active. A lot of work still going on there, and it's in the fourth, fourth slot. Next slide, please. So we had a 312 uh, POS merge, it's a little bit down from 340 last time, uh, kind of following a natural historical trend. So I expect the next sprint we'll see that rise up again. Next slide, please. Okay, um, so the enhancements and bugs, bugs fixes were fairly even, which is also kind of, kind of typical. Um, coming in the technical debt and refactoring were a strong three and four. Again, this is kind of a, a typical distribution we have going on. Next slide, please. And the repository health is fairly, fairly static from the last time. I guess I'll just make one comment is uh, the UI Classic, Dan mentioned last time they were trying to, uh, to bring their scores overall up and it's continuing to trend in the right direction. That's a, that's a good sign. Uh, next slide, please. Go over to Carol. All right. Um, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> For the community update, um, first we have the uh, release of Gaprin Dash Billy 5. I wonder when I can stop saying Gaprin Dash Billy. Um, so please take a look at the blog post uh, announcement and um, there's the information and download links and everything. Next, um, we have there's this meetup, design systems meetup in Brno, uh, that's next Tuesday, and Teresa and David are doing a presentation on component-based design and development. So definitely, if you're in Brno, um, please check it out and support our colleagues. Lastly, um, the, our usual uh, monthly, last month in Manage IQ, uh, this time around is APT, last month in Manage IQ, um, if you don't know what APT stands for, it's not Advanced Packaging 2, it's something else. So take a look at the interesting um, post and um, check it out. So that's all from me this time and uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, um, you see the PR accounts there, um, 90, we're down a little bit, but there was a holiday in the US in there, so. Uh, that's okay. Um, enhancements, uh, quite a few smaller ones, um, also finishing up some uh, enhancements for the hammer release, uh, displaying the custom button events for, for records. Uh, anytime a button is pressed, you can now see uh, when they were pressed and what buttons were pressed, etc. cetera. Uh, we added the about modal um, updates last time to show the plugin versions and that was uh, the styling was cleaned up on that. There's support links now from the to the details pages when you're when you see notifications. Um, there was a, a new uh, cloud volume type was added. Um, can also now upload and display the custom brand image for the login page and the header. We've got screenshots for a lot of these, by the way. In V2V, um, you can uh, now use the bit the um, flavor API for the best fit when you're uh, using uh, OpenStack. Um, in, inside the properties there when you're setting up. And then uh, you can now delete a migration plan. So a few bug fixes uh, of note uh, in the dialogues, the date time control was being initialized, but it was not being initialized to, to the current date time. It was being initialized to like, I don't know, 1970 or something like that. That was taken care of. You can uh, now mount an ISO for CD-ROMs. That was actually a, an enhancement, but there's a, the final uh, fix for that to make it work right in the UI. And now when you're doing automated simulation, 
uh, the paste button will only work if you're uh, pasting to a button that uses the same target class as the method that you were working on in, in the automated simulate. Next slide. All right, so here's a, like a summary screen where you'll see the custom button events link. And when you click on that, you'll get to see the actual events uh, that were, that were uh, created when the buttons were pressed. Next slide. There's the about modal plugin styling. So um, it starts out with the plugins collapsed and when you open them up, uh, if there's too many, it doesn't, instead of making a big, huge screen that you have to scroll through, you just have a scroll bar on the uh, plugin section. Next slide. The links to a detailed page. So when you see a notification there, you can now link to the actual page for, uh, you know, that, that the record that's uh, being referenced in the notification. Next slide. There's the uh, custom brand image uh, where you can upload it and see it on the login page and in the header. Next slide. All right, so there you can see uh, the flavor there on the right column. So you can uh, use that when you're uh, setting up uh, OpenStack uh, migrations. Slide. And this is a, a GIF, so you can actually see where you can select delete for for your uh, migration plans. That's it for the UI. Next slide, please. Thanks, Dan. So today I'll be covering updates from Core, OpenStack, Nuage, uh, Physical Providers, and Google. Next slide, please. Uh, so today, Nuage, or the Sprint Nuage led with 14% uh, of the overall PRs and OpenStack and Overt uh, tied for second on that one. Next slide. So for Core, the Sprint, we spent a lot of time doing some core refactoring to the refresh. So Martin S moved uh, persister builders, which help when you're doing graph refresh. There was one in every single provider repo. So we moved those to Core and put those under Manage IQ Providers Inventory. Uh, so that makes a, a lot easier for different providers to uh, add graph refresh. There's a lot less code that you need, and it moves all the default logic into core. We also added uh, setting accessors to the EXE management system. We were checking things like if graph refresh was enabled, uh, if targeted refresh was enabled, uh, and now there are methods on that, so you don't have to deal with going to the settings directly. And we're also uh, preparing for using the new inventory refresh gem, which is an extraction of everything under uh, manager refresh into a standalone gem. On the OpenStack side, they had a couple of bug fixes. There is an error message when you had a, an unknown physical network. Uh, so now they fix that and also fix the number of CPU cores being presented on an instance dashboard. Next slide. On the Nuage side, they added uh, links between security groups and both network routers and network subnets. Uh, so you get better uh, topology uh, information about your uh, security groups. Uh, Miha also added uh, a completely spec PR uh, to increase the coverage. If you saw before, the coverage on Nuage increased by 11%, uh, and that was purely due to that PR. So great job there. Uh, and also some cleanup of the refresher, removing a bunch of dead code. Uh, on the physical side, both uh, Redfish and Lenovo, uh, the Redfish team added a parent-child relationship for physical chassis, which is, I guess, something that Redfish does. Um, and the Lenovo team added canisters to physical storages, which is, in a physical storage, you can have sort of sub-compute elements that can be modularly swapped in a, in a physical storage, and they, they call those canisters, so we're now tracking those. Um, there's a schema change and also core changes for that. And on the Google side, now graph refresh is enabled by default. Martin S went through and is converting uh, providers that don't have graph refresh over. And he completed Google in this sprint, which is awesome. And that's it. Over to Tina for Automate. Thanks, Adam. Good morning. We had 13 PRs merge this sprint. Greg McCullough added the ability to set retirement values from the service dialog during service ordering. The retires on retirement worn values can be specified as a date or duration value in number of hours or days from the current time. The retirement worn values can also be specified as a duration value in days or hours from the retires on date. Greg added the MIQ widget service model and exposed the queue generate content method to automate. Lucy added the custom button event association to generic objects 
and Fabian added methods to enable users to set memory in the number of CPUs and automate code for the red VMs. Billy Fitz added the log and raise method to the log object embedded method, and Madhu added the log and exit method to the log object embedded method. Next slide, please. Eric fixed the dialog issue where the date time default value was not being saved properly. Madhu fixed an issue where stale state data was causing an error during an Ansible playbook method retry, clearing the stale state data resolved the issue. Billy Fitz resolved the quota issue that occurred when a VM reconfigure request was initiated by the REST API, and Lucy exposed the storage profiles association in the storage of service model. That's it for Automate. Next slide and over to Greg. All right. On the platform side, we got 19 PRs merged. A uh, big enhancement that was completed by Nick. Got the last few PRs in there for HA um, admin so that we now fully support um, failover with multi region replication. So that will also fail a lot of work uh, that Nick did over a long period amount of time. And that's all done. You can move on to other bigger and better things. <laughs> um, and uh, Libor made a nice enhancement to the chartback rate editor, where just adding the uh, metric description um, next to the the metric column that the rate is going to apply to, and I have a screenshot of that. Let's see, a couple of bug fixes of note. Um, Yuri fixed a, a bug uh, with duplicate notifications for VM provision completion tasks, and Keenan fixed a blow up in RBAC um, as well. That's a good one. Next slide. So this is a screenshot of the description that uh, that Libor added. It's it's basically the it's the column heading that you would see on the report, so then you know what the rates are going to apply to when you actually run the report and get the costs out there. That's a nice improvement. And that's it for the platform. I'll turn it over to Alberto for the rest. Thanks, Greg. <clears throat> so on the API side, we had three enhancements uh, that came in the sprint. First one by Brandon, we added the uh, best threat API for transformation mappings. That's uh, a action called VM flavor fit when you hit the API transformation mappings endpoint and it maps the VMs to the different OpenStack flavors. I'll give it an example here. We have the action VM flavor fit. You give it the href of the source VM and the destination provider and you can see in the results it tells you which flavor of fits best and all the ones that were involved in the selection. Next slide, please. Okay, next enhancement also by Brandon. We have new servicey thing related endpoints. Um, we have uh, API service offerings as well as the service parameter set, uh, the regular collection and resource fetches for the service offerings as well as the sub collection of service parameters set for it as well as separately the service parameter set uh, endpoint. Next slide, please. Okay, so David uh, H gave us uh, support for bulk tagging for users. Uh, so this usage is similar to how we do bulk assignments for VMs and services. So we've exposed the assigned and unassigned tags on the API users collections. And here you can just for example, you can say, okay, I want this this tag for all of these users or what have you. So you can do that in a single request, um, which which is pretty cool. So thanks, David. And that's it for the rest. Next slide, please. Hi, for documentation in this sprint, we had seven PRs merged, six of which were enhancements, one which was a bug. Um, some of those PRs where we added an update on creating Ansible Tower catalog items. Add a link out to the rev docs on specifying memory when creating a new VM. Uh, we added the reset feature to power states, and there is an update to a version of links in the HA guide. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, we'll meet again in uh, two weeks on the 26th for the Sprint 95 review. Have a great day.